morning. It's lovely to see you, whether you're a regular here in the church, or whether you're a visitor for your first time. So it's lovely to welcome you to the term. I hope you enjoy the service and the fellowship with us. The notices for today. The service this morning, part of the way through the service, the first part, we'll be going out round the square following Sophie the donkey. We'll be sharing in a Palm Sunday procession round the square. It is cold, so wrap up if you're going out. If you don't feel that you can walk round the square, then please just stay in church and keep warm until we get back. After we've walked round the square, the young people will go to Children's Church. And this evening at 7 o'clock, there's Youth Fellowship in the church hall this time, not on Zoom. So any young people of secondary school age are welcome to join us. Now, we're leading up to Holy Week, so next week, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, at 8 o'clock, are our Holy Week services here in church. And we invite everybody to share in the readings. So I've got a piece of paper here that's got all the readings on. Please sign up and share in some of the readings for Holy Week. On Thursday, it's Monday, Thursday. There's morning prayers in church, and then again at 8 o'clock, our Holy Week service, but with okay, Holy Communion. There. And on Friday, Good Friday at 8 o'clock, it's our Good Friday service. Then Easter Sunday. 8 o'clock, our early Easter service in church, and at 9 o'clock, there's Easter breakfast in the burial ground. And if you could, we will cater probably for about 50, but if you know definitely who's coming, it makes it a lot easier. So if you know you're coming, or if you know people who are coming that aren't here this morning, just sign up on the list and it will be lovely to see you at Easter breakfast. And then 11 o'clock is the family service for Easter, followed by the children's church Easter egg hunt in the square. And all the notices are in the newsletter and the Moravian Messenger. And apparently I've sent the, if you get it on email, I've sent it out as a publisher file. So I will resend it out as a PDF document. And I think that's all the notices, except for one very special notice. Because Archie is mine today. Archie, happy birthday, and so we'll sing. <laughs> we can sit. Oh, Alison's coming down here. <laughs>
first reading is taken from Luke chapter 19, verses 28 to 40. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethpage, Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a coat tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the coat, his owners asked them, why are you untying the coat? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the coat and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the, on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your dis disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. And the three volunteers, well, actually, I have two of this many volunteers. So you can buy it. Come on up. Yes, come on. Brilliant. Now, everybody in church needs to get. Palm cross, and there are people up in the gallery. I can see you up there. Lovely to see you, Laura. Um, that's right. So, somebody, two people need to go up to the galleries. Um, it's gallery. Um, so, if, will you do the two galleries? Right. Brilliant. Any helpers? Can you make sure that everybody downstairs gets across? And if somebody wants two crosses, they can have two crosses or three to take them with somebody at home. Okay? Yeah, that would be brilliant. That's going to help us. Brilliant. This could take a few minutes, so chat amongst yourselves. <laughs> And a prayer for our palm crosses. As these palm leaves were gathered from many trees, were harvested from many trees, gathered together and brought here for our use today, may we be part of your gathering, Lord of the earth. May your blessing be on these palms, so that for us and all who see them, they will be signs of your kingdom, at home or at work in barn or in office, a hospital bedside or above a child's cot. Help us to live lives true to our calling and to follow you, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. We stand to sing Hosanna, Hosanna.
join us walking around the square. Is everyone in? <laughs> I think so. Right, I've spotted two young people in the church up at the back, and I have your YPMA certificates here. So, could you pop down very quickly and come collect your YPMA certificates? That's brilliant. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Open for me the gates of the righteous, I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me, you have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. For the house of the Lord, for the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. 
with boys in hand, join in the festival procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will praise you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. And then Isaiah chapter 50 verses 4 to 9. The Sovereign Lord has given thee a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. The Sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious, I have not turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Because the Sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore have I set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the Sovereign Lord who helps me. Who will condemn me? They will all wear out like a garment. The moths will eat them up. This is the word of the Lord. I am speaking to God. Stand to sing 1072 in Christ the Lord.
and minds be found acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I have a bit of a thing about stones. I am interested generally, not no expert by any means, I'm just a bit of a dabbler, <coughs> but I'm, I'm interested in geology. Because geology is about what's underneath us, what's under, um, unseen, but it totally changes what we have above ground. It depends on geology and rainfall about whether you have bogs or clay, whether you have sand or good loam soil. The type of plants that you have depends on the geology, whether they're plants that like an acid soil or a lime soil. It all depends on what grows underneath, and native plants particularly, different native plants in different parts of the country because of the stone that's underneath. And that geology affects our buildings. If you ever drive from Lancashire to Yorkshire, you will see very suddenly and abruptly a change in the type of building material. Because Lancashire is all red brick. And as you move into Yorkshire, very clearly and suddenly, it becomes golden limestone. So, so you have golden sandstone. So you have red brick in one area and not far off you go into this sandstone. It's very distinct if you look out for it. And we can see it here, see it here in Graves Hill in the old buildings because you can see the basalt stone and the field stones, those round boulders that you can see in our buildings. So it affects the vegetation, it affects the type of soil, it affects the building materials we have. It affects so much. And what amazed me in the Bible reading was, and I hadn't expected it, it just hit me, was that in the three main Bible readings, there's a mention of stone. Face like flint, stone that's rejected, and the very stones that will cry out. Now, I think stones are an amazing thing. I love stone circles, stone crosses, ogham stones, and marker stones. Chris will tell you I'll make him drive miles out of the way so I can clamber across the field to find a modern stone. I love the way that stones not only affect what's underneath, <coughs> but are used as symbols for what's on the surface. So these three references to stone made me really stop and think about what's being said in these passages. The passage from Isaiah is the third servant song. And these servant songs, they're written originally by Isaiah, reflecting either his experience or the experience of the people. So they have a meaning in their time. But the amazing thing is that as we as Christians look at these passages, we of course see the time in which they're set, but we also see Jesus reflected back to us from the passages. Unknowingly, the writer writes in his circumstance, but it reflects back to us, Jesus. Isaiah is a prophet who speaks what God tells him. And if you look carefully at the passage, he listens to God, and then he gives the message. He gives the message to the weary. He's giving a message to people who are in exile. And he listens to God closely every day to give this message. And he faces his task. Now it's quite possible, looking at the passage, that Isaiah had been arrested by the Babylonians because it would explain some of the images that he uses in the passage. But he's not rebelled, he's faced what's there, and he's not tried to dodge it, not like Jonah getting on a boat and trying to escape. Isaiah has stood firm and face what's there, the hostility and the humiliation. But he doesn't flinch because God helps him. He is determined. And that lovely phrase that's come into common parlance, he set his face like flint because he knows that God will save him. 
And it's very similar to Job chapter 19, those words. And in Job it writes, Oh, that my words were written down. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and with lead, they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that the last he will stand on the rock, and in my flesh I shall see God. And those words from Isaiah are so similar to those words from Job. That sense of determination, that sense that God will be the vindicator, that God will ultimately see justice is done. And the idea of writing on a rock that is a witness forever. The way that hard rock doesn't give way. And so for us as Christians, we see Jesus in the servant songs. We see Jesus looking back out at us in the words that Isaiah writes. Because Jesus is the one who listens to God day by day. And we read time and again in the Gospels of Jesus who goes away to listen to God in the quiet. Who speaks words of comfort to his people. Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest, says Jesus to the people. Jesus comforting the weary and the worn down. And Jesus is the one who faces the humiliation of rejection, who faces certain death, but has set his face like flint. And you very much get that image from Luke's Gospel, more I think than the other Gospels. The other Gospels have the children racing up and down and all the rest of it. Luke is very set and determined. Everybody else is walking up to Jerusalem. It was part of the custom that you took that last bit of the pilgrimage on foot. Now this is the only account that we ever have, the account of Jesus going up to Jerusalem that has Jesus riding on a donkey. Everywhere else there's no mention of him riding. But at that point where everybody else is walking, Jesus is riding. He's making a very definite political statement and a religious statement that he is fulfilling the prophetic utterance that a king will come riding on a donkey. That's a challenge to the authorities, to the political authorities, and to the religious authorities, right from the very outset. There's no mistaking that. Everybody else is walking. Jesus is riding. And the crowds clearly see it as a fulfilment of prophecy. So political, definite. Setting his face like flint for what is going to come ahead. And then turning to Psalm 118. Now that's the song, that's the song that the pilgrims sang as they came up towards Jerusalem. As they got near to Jerusalem, could see the temple, they would start singing this song. And of course, it's Passover time, and they would be celebrating God's rescue of his people through the Exodus. And that refrain that's in the song, God's love endures forever. So for the people, they're remembering what God did in the past. They're trusting him for what he can do in the future. So in the middle of this song of praise, you get the verse. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Now is that about God choosing the despised small people? The people who were the slaves in Egypt? Is that verse describing them, the people that were rejected, the people that were as naught, the people that had their children butchered, God has chosen them and they've been the cornerstone? Well, I'm sure it is. But also again, looking at this verse, you see Jesus shining out of it. God's anointed, the Son of God, is ultimately rejected by the people in Jerusalem. Rejected by the popular crowds that are surrounding him on Palm Sunday. Rejected by the Sadducees and the Pharisees, the religious authorities, the elite. And rejected by the politicians, by the ruling army. But we know that the one who was rejected is vindicated. The one who was killed, put aside, has risen. And more than that, that this rejected one has become the cornerstone of our faith, 
the essential part of our faith. In that song we just sung, this cornerstone, this solid ground, the rock on which I stand, the rock on which we stand. So the cornerstone, the rejected one, is actually the vital part of the building. And then, of course, we turn to the Gospel passage where Jesus goes up to Jerusalem riding this donkey to the acclaim of the people and the group of people who accompanied Jesus right from the very beginning. And these people are telling everybody around of all the miracles that Jesus has done in Galilee. And even the words that they use, peace in heaven and glory in the highest, these words echo the song of the angels at his birth the song that was sung to the shepherds. Here we have earth repeating the angel's song. But the disapproval starts from those who should have recognised Jesus the most, those whose familiarity with scripture was the strongest. And Jesus, and they tell Jesus to get the crowd to be quiet. And Jesus says, if the crowd to quiet, the very stones will cry out. The stones are witnesses to the coming of the king into his kingdom. Even the stones cannot be silent. This entry of Jesus to Jerusalem and all that he faces in Jerusalem is not just relevant to Jerusalem. It has cosmic significance. This is an event in time, but outside of time. This is a game changer for humanity. Someone said even the atoms of the natural world are aligned with his symbolic declaration of identity. And this forces us to say, where are we? Is this just some madman that we're looking at? A rebel? Or a fool? Just a religious disruptor? A political disruptor? Or is he the king long promised? The king who takes seriously the need of the tired and the aching? The king who listens to children. <coughs> the king who will carry through God's plan and rescue his people. Which Jesus do we see? And where is our allegiance? And these very stones are witness to the faith of the people here in Grace Hill. The faith of the people who have this church built and the buildings round about. These stones are witnesses to the faith of people long gone, whom we will never know, perhaps only read about, who chose to follow Jesus. The flint who follows through. A flint is a very hard stone. It can be chipped and napped, but it can't be crushed. And if it is napped, its cutting edge is as sharp today as it would have been thousands of years ago when it was used as a tool. The cornerstone that was rejected is the foundation of our faith, the foundation of the buildings around us. And the very stones here speak of the faith of the people of the past, who they cry out about a faith in Jesus. I have a recommendation for a television programme for you. It's on BBC Two. It's called Pilgrimage and we saw it by accident on Friday night. It's a group of seven pilgrims following the journey of St. Commonsill, St. Columba. And they went to Columba's birthplace, and they went to Glen Colum Kill, and they visited an ancient Christian cross. And the cross very clearly had, the ancient stone very clearly had the cross etched on it. And there was, of course, as you might guess, the resident atheists, the pagan, and others, and they were just chatting and gently mocking it in a way. But there's one young Christian on this journey, and she burst into tears because for her, the cross carved into this ancient rock spoke of the people who had believed for centuries. She just found she couldn't take the mocking, and she burst into tears. These ancient stones still have a power to move and act as a witness of the faith of the people around us. And it's very pressing for us because as we celebrate looking at hoping for world heritage, working towards that, we have to remember this is not just about bricks and mortar. 
This is about this place being a very witness, being living stones, speaking of the faith that we have and that we share with those who came before. So may we put our lives on firm ground, on the rock that never moves. May our community and our church be a place that still tells the Christian story. And may we be living stones, speaking out and praising our Lord whenever and wherever. Amen. Now we stand to sing number 77, or Glory Lord Along.
for the church's failure to declare the fullness of the gospel, for our own failure to accept your lordship over our lives, for failures in honesty, kindness, courage and obedience, for every lack of love to you and to our neighbour, accept our confession and grant us your healing, your peace and the power of your spirit. Lord Jesus, you said the hour has come. For you it brought suffering, for us judgment. No longer can we hide from you and fill our lives with irrelevances. We must make up our minds. Either we are for you or we are against you. Show us how we can take up our cross and follow you. Through the clamour of our desires and amid the tumult of the crowd, let us hear your voice. When we are tempted to deny you, strengthen us. When we cannot see the way forward, guide us. When we are disappointed and upset, comfort us. When we are afraid, keep us calm and strong. Lord Jesus, long ago you wept for Jerusalem. And today, Lord, we weep for the villages, towns and cities in Ukraine, the places smashed by bombs, the homes and civic buildings and transport facilities destroyed, people's bodies broken, hearts broken. Lord, as you wept for Jerusalem, so we weep for the Ukraine, for the people there. And we pray for justice, we pray for an end to fighting, we pray for the Russian army returning to its own borders. We pray for restoration and that people who have been made refugees will one day be able to return to their homes. Today you share the tears we shed. Bright lights and fine buildings serve to point up great achievements, yet can hide the loneliness, the squalor and the corruption. Give wisdom to all in local government, industry, the arts, education and medicine. Renew in our midst true community life and show your presence, show your people how they can make your presence known in the world today. By your royal entry into the holy city, Lord Jesus, just as you challenge the religious practices of your time, challenge us today in the life and witness of the Church. We believe we are your body, yet we know too little of your power, your direction and your love for the world. Deepen our faith, heal our divisions, enliven our witness and impel us to reach out and gather all people into your kingdom. By your royal entry into the sanctuary. To Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the King of the rulers of the earth, be the glory and the dominion for ever and ever. Amen. We stand to sing number 89 Make Way, Make Way.
Go with him in triumph. Go with him in suffering. Go with your cross as he goes with his. Go knowing his blessing and his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us always. Amen.